Well, of, of the various things I've done, let me pick out one that's particularly dear to me. It has a technical name. It's called the duality of H1 and BMO. So for people who aren't specialists in, in math, let me try to describe what that's about. Um, the, the subject is, is complex variables, which is one of the great achievements of 19th century math. Uh, the people who developed that were, were working on problems involving uh, two-dimensional worlds. Uh, uh, how would electric fields behave in a two-dimensional world? Uh, how would fluids flow in a two-dimensional world? Um, <clears throat> how would you make accurate maps of the surface of the Earth, although the map is flat and the Earth is curved? Uh, and several other problems which are a little more technical to describe. These problems all sound very different, but in fact they are all the same. And the fact that they're all the same can be used. You can jump from one point of view to another to, to develop uh, uh, more and more uh, insight until finally you arrive at deep and beautiful truths which are not obvious from any of the one uh, of the individual points of view. That's complex variables. And uh, the duality of H1 and BMO relates a, a topic in, within that subject to probability theory, so it's an additional connection. That led to a lot of mathematics, uh, which I think I would have trouble uh, describing in a short time, uh, but ultimately it did lead to practical applications. It feels to me as if I don't pick problems, they pick me. Uh, I might hear about a problem in a lecture, I might read it in a book or journal article, maybe a friend will tell me, maybe I will think of it myself from some train of thought. Um, but uh, it, it happens that a problem grabs hold of my imagination and I cannot stop thinking about it. Uh, it has happened many times that out of sheer frustration with lack of progress, because it, it often takes a very long time uh, to make any progress, uh, out of sheer frustration, I, I want to drop the problem, but I can't. It is too fascinating, and, and I'm unable to stop thinking about it. I suppose I have solved a few dozen problems. Um, I have a few favorites, but let me pick out again the duality of H1 and BMO that I spoke about before. It is particularly sweet to me because normally I, I suffer for a long time to solve a problem. It, it might take years or decades uh, with many false leads and, and great frustration. But uh, this particular achievement uh, I, I, um, I accomplished in about two weeks by sheer luck with no, no pain and a lot of joy. Well, my, my very first uh, graduate student was, was a particularly brilliant uh, Spanish student, Antonio Cordoba, who, who had excellent job offers in the United States, but went back to Spain and played a key role in, in the strengthening, in the tremendous, in the reawakening of Spanish mathematics uh, uh, after the Franco era. Um, uh, one of the successes of, of Spanish mathematics is the very active group in fluid dynamics led, in fact, by his son, Diego Cordoba. Um, uh, his, uh, who, by the way, was also my graduate student once upon a time. Uh, uh, his group and I have, have collaborated on, on problems of fluid mechanics, and we have been very fortunate to solve uh, two outstanding problems. Uh, and, and the relationship continues, and we hope, we hope to solve more unsolved problems. Well, in defense of basic research, uh, in particular basic research in mathematics, uh, I, I would cite um, lots of medium-sized applications and a few huge ones. Uh, let, let me give an, a couple of examples. So the, um, one of the standard medium-sized applications is um, 
is, is the CAT scan. So um, over a hundred years ago, uh, a mathematician thought of the question of trying to probe some unknown goo by passing straight lines through it and understanding uh, how, much of, how much of each straight line meets the goo. Um, from that, he was able to reconstruct the distribution of goo in space. Um, that was long before the invention of the CAT scan, but when the CAT scan came along, uh, that was precisely the math problem that one needed to solve in order to extract useful information from, from the data that the machine produces. So that's a medium-sized application, and there are many, many, many such, and, and math is essential in technology. Um, but I would say more important than that are the really big applications. I don't know what the big application will be in the 21st century, but in the 20th century, uh, the big application was the computer. So mathematicians uh, thought about the question of what could be computed without creativity? What, what could be computed mechanically? And they devised, they devised uh, in a theoretical way, a, a machine which would be capable of computing anything that did not require creativity to compute. Um, under the pressures of World War II, uh, in which uh, problems arose that required an awful lot of computation, um, mathematician, uh, mathematicians and physicists and engineers uh, combined and built such machines. And that's how the computer came into being. Others, going back at least to the 19th century, also had the idea to build computers. Uh, but this was the effort that worked, just as, let's say, Columbus's discovery of America was the important one, even though others had discovered America beforehand. So I think that that, that particular um, uh, contribution of mathematics um, has uh, consequences to society that, that completely uh, dwarf the sum total uh, spent supporting mathematics by all countries since the time of the Babylonians.